Hey everybody, Ace Fangirl here, back with the final installment of the vlogs from uh, my Japan adventure. Um, I was originally planning on making all of this one video, but then I actually started editing it all together and was like, this would be like three hours long if I decided to make it one video, so I decided to split it up. <clears throat> I hope that's okay, <laughs> but um, I really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing my pictures, videos, just weird stuff from my time um, overseas, I guess. Uh, I don't know, I didn't really plan this out before I started, maybe I should have done, but I just really wanted to get this all done as soon as possible so that I can talk about the trip with you guys because I was really excited to do that. Um, so anyways, I hope you enjoy those videos. I know I'm not like the best cinematographer slash photographer ever, but I really tried to just bring you guys on the trip with me because that's really what I wanted. I missed you guys so much while I was gone. Um, I'm sure that Noelle and Maddie can attest that I talked about you guys like all the time. <laughs> so there's that. Um, I hope you guys had fun with Dang and Rompo while I was gone and that everything went according to plan. I didn't notice any glitches and I checked in every couple of days. So I hoped uh, that everything was going fine with that. But all of that recap is not what this video is about. Um, this video is for two things. Uh, first, I offered to do like a little Q&A on like travel, excuse me, um, um, on like travel experiences, any questions um, that you guys might have about either traveling in general or just going to Japan or Korea. Um, and then also, I of course <laughs> want to show all of the things that I bought and brought back with me um, from Japan and Korea. So I thought we could do the Q&A first and then move on to the other stuff because it's going to take a while. <laughs> um, so I had a couple people ask me questions. I wrote them all down, so I'm going to have to find where I wrote them. Um, so. Sparrow, uh, aka Small Spurred Art, who you've seen featured on my channel in a couple different places um, doing art for me, such as the Dandelion uh, and Slate Art, and also the art in the um, uh, Lost in Thoughts All Alone cover. Uh, he's awesome. Love him. Also, I'm recording this on his birthday, so happy birthday, babe. Love you so much. Um, he had a couple questions about... Um, traveling in general, so what would I consider some travel hacks or essentials uh, for traveling abroad, especially internationally? Um, essentials, I would say one thing that I really learned about myself during this trip is that I do not do well without Wi-Fi. Um, you can have international service, uh, at least on my plan, for about $10 a day, but that doesn't really get you data at least from my experience, so having Wi-Fi was really important. In Japan this was pretty easy um, because they have places at the airport that you can rent Wi-Fi, so we got ours um, for the whole time that we were in Japan, which was about two weeks, for $180, which split between the three of us that were sharing it. Doesn't end up being too bad for the amount of time that we got it. Korea was a little bit more difficult. I was told that Korean Wi-Fi is great, and it is if you're in like a PC cafe or something like that. <laughs> Korean Wi-Fi in general, I did not have the best experiences with. Now that could be because the Airbnb we were staying at um, was advertised to have its own egg, or which is like what they call portable Wi-Fi there, but it was a really terrible egg. Um, so didn't have the best experiences with Wi-Fi in Korea, so I would definitely recommend if you are traveling abroad, and I feel like this goes with for anywhere um, out of the country, make sure that you have access to Wi-Fi or some kind of data plan, only because not only are you going to want to call home and talk to your family, it's also really essential for being able to get around. Um, Google Maps is your best friend in Japan. Because, uh, in particular, but I feel like in Korea too, we didn't need it as much in Korea because we had um, someone helping us get around. 
But in Japan, Google Maps was great for telling us when trains would get there and stuff like that. Um, so Google Maps is your best friend. Um, other essentials... Water? <laughs> I had my own like refillable thermos that ended up actually breaking like halfway through the trip, so maybe like invest in a good one, especially if you're going in the summer, uh, because it's so hot. Um, yeah, I can't, uh, hacks is hard, <laughs> like, I don't know if there's really any hacks that I can recommend for traveling, there's no real way to make traveling easier, it just depends on you, in my opinion anyways. So, I'm not really sure that I have a good answer for that, but I'll think about it, and I'll, I can come back to it if I need to. Um, he also wanted to know the best and worst parts of traveling with friends, um, because, as you know, I did travel with Noelle, my best friend, uh, her older sister, and then one of our other friends is actually teaching in Japan, so she graciously hosted us for a week and then spent a lot of time with us and actually came with us to Korea, which was really fun. Um, I mean, the best parts of traveling with friends are obviously they're your friends, so you're going to have fantastic experiences um, with your friends that you won't get if you're just, you know, staying in the States and hanging out. Um, since this was a trip that we've been talking about taking since high school, it was kind of crazy that it was actually happening. Um, and since we obviously have a lot of interests in common, since we are best friends, um, it was fun because we were able to do things that we knew that we would both enjoy. Um, or all of us, really, because Maddie and Kaylin also have the same interests that we do. So, um, you know, having someone with you, like, if I went with my family, there was no way I would have been able to do all of the stuff that I did in Japan because my family is just not into, like, that kind of culture, like, video game, anime, any of that stuff. My family is not about that life. So there's no way that I would have been able to do all of that stuff. Like I would have had to drag them around and they wouldn't have had fun. But because I was with Noelle um, and we have the same interests, we had we had fun. Um, the worst parts, um, I don't know if this, worst is a strong word, but, and I feel like this goes for traveling in general with other people, not, not even necessarily like your friends, but like, make sure that they have the same, like, tra not travel schedule, what am I, what, what is, like, the phrase I'm looking for here, like, travel mindset, I guess, that you do? Like, it doesn't seem as important, but being able to work on the same levels of sleep and same, like, getting food schedules, like, that kind of stuff, we were definitely together on when we needed to get food. Sleep, Noelle and I have always needed different amounts of sleep, so I kind of expected that it was going to be a thing. But just make sure that you, like, either come to some sort of agreement or, like, find some way to work it out. Um, because it's really kind of, this didn't happen to us, but I could see it being very hindering to your trip if you like can't agree on how long you're going to sleep, when you're going to need to eat, like that kind of thing. So that's something that I feel like you should talk about probably even before you go on a trip together. And that I feel like goes for domestic travel as well. Possibly even just staying at home and doing things like, you know, that that's generally pretty important if you want to like hang out together, but it, didn't, it wasn't an issue for us on this trip really, so but I could see it being an issue and is a piece of advice that I would give for traveling anywhere with your friends. Um, the stops in, the one stop in Japan and Korea you'd recommend for those visiting for their first time. Um, it's kind of hard because it really depends on what you're into. Like, if you're into the whole video game scene, I would definitely recommend going to Akihabara in Japan. Um, because that's really where all of, like, the nerdy stores are and, like, all that stuff. You can, like, just walk down the street and go into stores and find figurines. And that's, that's what we did on the first day in the vlog. Um, like, there's figurines, games, everything everywhere. Like, that would be, definitely be, should be your first stop if you are into that kind of culture. Um, if you're into, I would definitely also recommend the Studio Ghibli Museum. Um if you enjoy Studio Ghibli movies. 
it can be hard to get tickets, so you're gonna have to plan that in advance. But if that, if you like any Studio Ghibli movie at all, Kiki's Delivery Service, Spirited Away, any of that, definitely hit up that museum. Like, it, it was incredible, and I wish I was allowed to take more pictures, but they do not let you take pictures inside, and I can see why. But, um, given, like, everything that's inside it, but, um, you're, you're not allowed to take pictures inside, uh, but it was so cool. Um, in Korea, again, depends on really what you're interested in. I would definitely recommend doing the palace that we did, because it was just such a cool place to, like, walk around and imagine how life would have been if you were, like, actually living in this palace, because, like, it's huge, and I'm like, how I would get lost, like, if I lived in this palace. Also, the National Museum that we went to, um, was really cool. I admittedly didn't really know much about Korean history when we went, like, how the country originated or anything, and being able to, like, see all of these exhibits and artifacts from, like, back, like way back, like prehistoric days, was pretty cool. And I feel like I learned a lot from that museum. So if you're into the more historical side of things, would definitely recommend. Um, also, oh god, I don't remember the name of the market, but there's a market that we went to on, I think it was the first day. Um, it started with an N. You have to think about it. Um, but I would definitely recommend doing a market like that. Um, in Korea, especially if you just want to eat because there's like tons of places to eat in there You can grab like street food like dumplings um, That kind of stuff. So if you're there for like a food adventure definitely do one of those markets because um, You will love it. There's so much food. It was great. <laughs> I love to eat so um, and then uh, <laughs> He had okay, so part of the reason why we wanted to not why we wanted to go to Korea, but like one of the bonuses of going to Korea is that um, Noelle more so than me, but I also am uh, really in- we are really into K-pop. Uh, love K-pop. And um, K-pop albums, I'll show you some when I open my um, what I'm lovingly calling the uh, trash bag or my bag of souvenirs. Um, but K-pop albums are really cool in that they come with like on photo books of like the members and stuff like that and if you try and import them into America they're gonna cost you like probably 40 50 bucks because of they're so expensive to import but in Korea you can pick them up for like 15 bucks so that was something um, Sparrow and I were constantly talking about because I did actually pick up quite a few albums for around 15 20 bucks a piece and so one of our favorite bands is Blackpink. Um, so we asked what my favorite Blackpink song is, and that's really difficult. Um, but I would have to go for a tie between Forever Young and um, Do 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 Do. I think is the name of it. But um, both of those songs are my favorites. So I will. I did pick up the Blackpink album, so I will show it to you when we get to that point. Um, Twy, of course, had a few questions. Uh, my favorite thing that I saw, which is super vague, thanks for that. Um, my favorite thing that I saw, I feel like, well, I guess this kind of, he also asks, what did you learn about the culture? And I feel like these kind of go together in my mind because I could say this about both Korea and Japan. I felt like it was so cool, like you'd just be walking around. Um, like when we were in Kyoto, we'd just be walk- we were just walking like in the Shiki market, um, and then it somehow got into like- we somehow found ourselves in like a mall where there were just like clothing stores and like super modern looking stores and then you would just look to your right and there's just a shrine, like just there, you know, you so you can just stop and go to the shrine while you're at the mall. Um, and I feel like it was so cool, like you'd just be walking around, um, in wherever and you just see someone dressed up like in the lolita style or in a yukata or when we were in korea um i noticed it like when we were walking through one particular neighborhood you would just walk by people in hotbox like even though it was so hot outside i don't know how they were like living but i think it was kind of cool to just like see that the traditional culture is still alive and well 
And I think that was especially apparent when we went to the festival in Japan when we when we all got dressed up in yukata and got to see how many people still practice that traditional like kind of lifestyle and get dressed up in yukata and go enjoy the festival where there's traditional dancing, traditional food. Like it was so crowded the night we went because everyone was just celebrating together like the Lantern Festival and it was really cool and I think that's probably my favorite thing that I saw. Like it's not something that had never occurred to me before going but it didn't occur to me that I could just be walking down the street and just see someone walk by me in Yukata on like a normal day. Like that's just not something that occurs to me and I thought it was really cool that that actually happened like more times than I could probably count. Um, I think that kind of answers what I learned about the culture as well. Um, Spec Lad wanted to know if I went to the Nishiki Koji Starbs, the Starbucks. I did not because I forgot where it was. Um, I forgot that it was in Kyoto until after I left Kyoto. And I think it is in Kyoto. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that it is. Um, and I completely forgot that it was there. Um, until I left and I remembered like the night we got home and I was like, ah man, but we did go to a super huge Starbucks in um, Shibuya, the uh, two-story Starbs, um, and then I went to a couple other ones and I went to one in Korea as well, I think, so I, I went to plenty of Starbucks. Um, Starbucks in Japan is great, might I just add. Um, they have so much good food. They have like green tea scones that I really wanted to try and I got this really good like passion fruit mango smoothie type thing that they do not have here in the states and it was bomb um he all speckled also wants to know if um my basic proficiency in japanese and then not at all proficiency in korean would be inhibiting to spending time in the country so i feel like we should take these two separately so we're going to start with japan um, as you guys, some of you probably know, I took one class of Japanese, um, this past semester of college, so I basically know buildings, colors, how to introduce myself, and I can read, um, katakana and hiragana, um, and, like, five kanji, but, like, that didn't help. I did not feel like Japan, like, not knowing, not being fluent in Japanese was inhibiting at all for traveling in Japan. Everyone in Japan is like pretty good about helping you um, if you make like an effort. Um, and then of course I had Noelle with me who is more fluent than I am. Um, and then our friend who lives there is, knows a fair amount of Japanese and so obviously because she lives there she can get around. Um, so in Japan, I did not feel inhibited at all by not knowing Japanese. A lot of the restaurants have English menus um, that they will give you when they see that you are foreigners um, and stuff. And eventually near the end of the trip, I was ordering my own food in Japanese once I listened to Noel do it like enough times. And I was like, all right, I can probably order for myself now. Um, so I, it, but even if you can't, like Japan is really good, I feel about um, helping you through and, um, making sure that you can still, like, get everywhere you need. Also, all of the displays and stuff for the trains do show up in English, um, eventually, so transportation is also not a huge issue. Um, and that's the same in Korea as well. They do show all the transportation signs and stuff in English, so that way you can get around. Korea, I know approximately, like, three phrases in Korean, um, and uh, excluding everything that Dandelion has taught me, which basically is like idiot, um, I know how to say that, um, and then I know, uh, 안녕하세요, which is hello, and also goodbye, um, 감사합니다, which is thank you, 미안해요, which is I'm sorry, and chicken juiceo, which is I want chicken, and that's about all I know in Korean. Um, I still feel like it was possible to get around, but... The, Korea had less of like transportation was still fine like that was all still um, able to be read in English but menus and stuff in restaurants um, some had English some did not 
um, that kind of thing. And I feel like, although, like, you can order food and stuff, like, in English, I feel like Japan was a little bit better about it than Korea. Thankfully, we didn't have to worry about it as much because, um, we had someone with us that would was fluent in Korean, so, like, we were able to, like, get around without any difficulty at all, and so it was okay. Um, but... I, I don't feel like it's inhibiting at all, even if you know none of the language. Like, I probably could have gotten around in Korea by myself um, without knowing any Korean at all. Like, I feel confident that I could have possibly done that, but I feel like it would be way, it would be easier to do it in Japan if you don't know any Japanese um, than it would be in Korea. But maybe that's just me, based on how I did spend more time in Japan, so I did become slightly more accustomed to like traveling and stuff there. Maybe if I'd have spent more time in Korea, that answer would be reversed. I'm not sure. But overall, not inhibiting. Like, you can definitely get around without knowing you, uh, any of the language or anything. Um, and then Bitfrost asked, what was the strangest thing I saw? I don't know if I have a good answer. I don't think I really saw anything, like, out of the ordinary, like... Um... I mean, obviously you're in a different culture, like, there are some things that are gonna be different from your culture, but I don't think there was anything that I saw that I was like, wow, that is, like, so strange, I don't even understand what's going on here. I had a lot of unique experiences that I wouldn't be able to do back in the States, like, you know, wearing yukata, I did a traditional onsen, which is like a shared bath, um, kind of thing. Like, I had strange experiences that I wouldn't be able to do here, which I am, like, eternally grateful for, but I don't know if I could say that I saw anything, like, really, really strange that I feel like is worth mentioning that's, like, oh, that's so strange. I can't think of anything. No, I'll keep thinking about that, too. And, um, <laughs> he also wanted to know about my best interaction with a local. Um... I have two that I can think of off the top of my head. One which happened in English and one which happened in Japanese. So when we went to the um, the open air architecture museum on like the third day, um, when we were touring one of the houses, um, the they they had like people inside the houses that were kind of you know like the caretakers. So they were like watching over things, and one of the guys when he saw that we were from America, or like he asked where we were from and we said we were from America. And so he basically gave us a tour of the whole house, like, in English, asking us, you know, like, oh, what do you think this is? And, like, showing us, like, what it actually was. Like, he would be bring out, like, a box, and he was like, oh, what's this? And we were like, it's a box. Like, I don't know. And he would be like, it's a sewing kit. And he would open it, and it has, like, all the, like, a bunch of thread and needles and, like, stuff inside. So he showed us all around the house in, like, English. And then he, and when we went, the park was actually, like, closing. So we walked out, we ended up walking out with him and like talking and he told us like I've been practicing my English, like I've been to America a couple times, I've been to like New York and California and he was like, I've been to Minnesota and we were like, why? <laughs> why did you go to Minnesota? Um, but he, that, so that was really cool because he kept, he, you could tell that he was like really practicing his English with us. He was like, oh like, how are you enjoying Japan? Like what is your favorite kind of Japanese food so far that you've tried? Like that kind of thing. So that was really, really cute. and like. It's a thing, like, people will come up to you, and my friend, um, Caitlin, who lives in Japan, says that this has happened to her, like, a couple times. When people see that you are a foreigner, and that you probably speak English, they'll come up to you and they'll start practicing their English on you. Um, like, they'll come up and, like, start a conversation with you in English. Um, ask, like, because they just want to practice. It didn't happen to us that much, but Caitlin says this happened to her, like, a couple times, and I think that's kind of awesome. Like... They just are so passionate about practicing that they'll just walk up to a random stranger and be like, hello, how are you? Like that kind of thing. Um, my other favorite interaction was when we were on the train, um, we were standing near the door because sometimes you can't get a seat on the train and this lady, we were carrying our, um, our luggage because I think we were going somewhere. I think this might have been when we were going from Caitlin's apartment to Shibuya because we stayed in a hotel, I think. I think it was that day. So we all had our huge suitcases, like, it was a struggle. And so this lady is like sitting, we're near the door, and this lady is like sitting on the seat nearest the door, and she like looks up to, up at me and says, in Japanese, um, do you want my seat? Like, do you want to sit down? 
and I like kind of understood what she was getting at because she was like also kind of making gestures and I was like yeah yeah that's jobu which is like uh, no no it's okay like don't worry about it um kind of thing and she just like and wasn't really saying anything but just was like being really nice and like <laughs> and then when she left um she eventually left the train about like one stop before we did and she like waved at us and was like sayonara and like said bye and stuff and we were like bye thank you for being nice lady like she was so nice and then I eventually like took her seat after she left like but um she was really nice like I caught people on the train um probably were my favorite experience like talking to people on the train and stuff like that because um the trains are so crowded but also like everyone is pretty nice about like giving up seats to people who need it so my friend when my friends and I were sitting down and would see like someone get on the train like someone older who might need a seat we would just like get up and I feel like in some ways they were kind of surprised because I didn't see as many like Japanese people our age or younger like getting up to give people their seats um but maybe that's because I didn't see any uh, or as much but they would they would always be like so appreciative the other thing that I feel like is worth mentioning um but it's not a good thing necessarily is people on the train would ask where we were from and we would say America I do not even I cannot even count how many times the only response people gave us was ah oh, Trump and we were just like yes <laughs> like ugh. we were like how do we say like we don't like him <laughs> but yeah that's that that was definitely a thing that happened um several several times um but so I, th I think those like interactions on the train were probably like my favorite interactions with people traveling um more so in japan than in korea but um i feel like the trains are just so fun <laughs> i like traveling on them um so that's all the questions i have so Time to show you what I got. So this is not necessarily going to be in any kind of order because I kind of just had to shove stuff in this bag um, to make it all fit. I am very glad that I brought this extra bag. Um, I brought it originally because I didn't want to carry my huge suitcase to Kyoto um, when we went because we were only going for a couple of days and I was like I'm not gonna bring my whole suitcase like that's stupid. Also I didn't even know if I was allowed to bring it on the bullet train so I was like I'm just gonna bring a duffel bag. And then eventually I was like, I have too many souvenirs to fit in my suitcase. Duffel bag time! Um, so yay, thank god. So, I have a couple things that I took out beforehand because they weren't in the duffel bag. Um, which is, this is actually good that I'm going through this today because, um, I bought a lot of things for my younger sisters. And one of them, they're both traveling right now, um, but one of them gets back tomorrow. So I promised that I would have all of her gifts out on her bed before she got home. Uh, and, I, but I wanted to wait, obviously, until I recorded this video, so, you know, I'm cutting it down to the wire a little bit, but that's cool. So, these are things that I got in Korea, um, first and foremost. Um, Korea, the, one of the areas that we went, um, had a lot of really cute little stores. Um, so, Line is a huge thing there. I use Line to talk to, um, Smallest Bird and, um, a couple of other people. Um, it's basically like a messaging app, um, but it has like little, um, they're not emojis, but like characters that are like very famous. So we went to quite a few line stores. Um, if you saw me put like a lot of BT21 stuff in the, um, the, the Korea vlog, it's because those are line characters that were made by BTS. Um, which is obviously a huge K-pop band. If you don't know who BTS is, stop this video immediately. Go look them up, come back, I'll wait. Yeah, okay. Um, so, there were a lot of stores like that that had those characters. And then also just like, characters, like animal characters, seem to be a big thing in Korea. Um, so I bought, I went into one of the, the store was called Art Box. I went in, oops, I don't know what that is. Um, I went in and bought some stickers for my sisters. So I bought these for myself, these little cherry blossom ones. And then I bought these two sets for my sisters because I thought they were very cute. Um, so those are a thing. I'm gonna like kind of sort out piles actually so that I can give things to my sisters. I also bought them these bookmarks um, from the palace in Korea because they were um, 
used by like scholars in the Joseon dynasty. Um, and they were made these were made at like a little craft store that was in there that I just thought were really cool and I thought they could use them at school because they were used by scholars. Like I thought it was kind of a nice thing. So those are going in their piles. And then I also bought this for myself. Um, it's just a little phone charm that's also a little book. Um, I basically just, I don't know, I saw it and I like just fell in love with it. Like I thought it was super beautiful. Um, that the outside is like cloth, like kind of thing. And it, it kind of looks like my little shrine book, which I'll show you later. Um, so I just got it because I kind of just fell in love with it, like, at first sight. So I picked that up. Um, I don't even know what this is. What is this? Oh, my twice pen. Um, so I'm... Another thing about Korea is that everywhere they have stores for idols. Like, K-pop stars, K-pop act or not K-pop actors, just Korean actors. Like, stores with photos and merch of them. It's a huge thing. Like, they're everywhere. So my friend, my friends and I went into a couple of these, and at one of them I found um, this really cute pin for Twice, which is my fa one of my favorite um, K-pop girl groups. Um, and I thought the pin was very cute because this is what their light stick um, kind of looks like when you go to K-pop concerts. You wave light sticks in the air when they're performing. Um, I wanted to buy one for Blackpink too, but they did not have that pin, which was very sad. So, it's okay. But I bought one for Twice. If you don't know Twice, please go look them up. Also, they are literally adorable, and I love them so much. Um, so that's, that's one of my Korea bags. Um, the next thing that I, I was carrying it in my backpack, because I didn't trust it being in, in the trash bag, um, is my shrine book, which I bought in Tokyo. And then, so this is this is a Japan thing. We're we're jumping back to Japan really quick. I told you it's not gonna have any order. I'm sorry, but um, so basically in Japan, when you go to shrines, you can pay about 300 yen, which is like three dollars or so, and um, at shrines, and if you give them a book, which whoops backwards, which looks like this, um, they will do calligraphy and stamps in it that are kind of unique to the shrines that you go to. So, um, oops, there are little papers inside them because they also give you, like, prayers and stuff. So I got, and then they also make sure that, like, obviously the ink doesn't bleed. So I think this is, oh, I haven't actually opened it since, um, we got them. So I think this is the one from, um, Nada, from the Big Buddha Temple, um, the first one that we got. Um, this one is from a little shrine that we found. Um, in Kyoto, it w I forget what it was called, but it was a very small shrine and it was for um, mothers and children. Like, mothers would bring their babies there when they were just born, and it would be like where the naming ceremonies are held and stuff like that. The lady there was so nice, and she like gave us a nice tour of the little temple area and let us like sit inside and like, um, while she did these for us. So I got, um, whoops, where did it go? Um, yeah, so I got the hydrangeas, um, the hydrangea stamp. Oh, all the little papers are falling out, but it's okay, because they're not really necessary anymore, because the ink is dry. Um, and then this one, this one, um, was from the festival night, um, that we went to. There were so many people there getting their books done, like, they were taking numbers. Like, you would drop off your book and they would give you a number, um, because there were so many people getting um, this design done in their books, and it's, it's special, you can see, because it has the purple lantern, um, on the bottom, which means that you went during, like, the lantern festival, which I thought was pretty cool, um, so that, I'm really glad that I bought this, because although I, we were hoping to get more in Kyoto, the bigger shrines, we couldn't find where people were doing them, they just had, like, kind of a do-it-yourself stamp thing, which we thought, like, wasn't as special, so we didn't want to do it. But, um, yeah, I'm really, and they had so many different designs of shrine books there. The book was like $15, and then you pay like $3 or $4, like, per stamp. But it's, like, really worth it, because now you can remember, like, all the shrines you went to, and next time I go, when I go back to Japan, which is not an if, it's a when, um, I can bring this with me and get more stamps. Yay! Um, so it's time to open up the trash bag. I literally haven't- I've unpacked everything else, but I haven't opened this at all yet, so 
These are my my luggage stamps. Get that out of here. Um, so oh, it looks like the first thing on top is a K-pop album. Uh, this is BTS. I don't think it's the newest album, but it's one of the newer albums. For maybe it is the newest. I'm not sure. For BTS, I bought this at a little bookstore that we found. Um, on the second day, I wasn't originally going to buy another one, but I saw this for like 15 bucks and had to pick it up. So this is what a this this is an example of what a K-pop album would look like. The CD is in the back, and then just inside is just photos of cute boys. They're great, and then usually they come with like a photo card, so it's usually random which one you get. But <laughs> um, so they have like lyrics inside, and then a special photo card, and then pictures of all the guys and or girls. Um, and I love them. So this is Wings by BTS. Great album. Um, Wings is special because it is like more of a solo themed album, so usually they all sing in groups, but Wings is a little bit more solo driven. Um, so that's why I really wanted to pick it up. Um, and then... Everything is still in bags too, so this is fun. Oh god, here we go. So we're starting with Korea because it's what I had on top. Um, because I threw things on top. Oh, we have my cup from BT21. Um, we went to the ca the line store in Itaewon. Um, they have a cafe there because it's like the flagship line store. And they had BT21 themed drinks, so of course I got, um, the Chimmy drink, which was like a mango passion fruit smoothie. It's a photo of it in the blog. So good. And so I kept the cup because it was really cute. Um, and then I got a special bag for BT21. I actually got this at the first line store that we went to though. Um, so inside this bag we have, um, first of all, my some I bought, I, I like to spoil my friends. Um, so I bought my sisters a lot of stuff and I also bought um, uh, uh, Smallest Bird a lot of stuff because he, loves BT21, BTS, um, in general, and so I bought him some things. He already knows about it, so it's okay. Um, happy birthday, babe! Um, so these are his favorite characters, um, Mang, which is the horse, and Koya, which is the koala. So I bought him some tape and a cute little pen, um, from BT21. Alright, that needs to be in another pile, because I'm gonna need to send all of this to Switzerland. Um, <laughs> and then I also bought... <laughs> a notebook for myself because I have an unhealthy notebook obsession and I thought this was like kind of the cutest thing that I've ever seen in my life. So I bought this for myself. Um, so that's mine. Oh, hit the laptop. I'm sorry. Um, and then also in this uh, pile is all of the albums that I bought. So first we have the most recent Twice album, which Dance the Night Away is one of my new favorite songs ever. Um, they are so cute. I love them and they all look so great in their island attire. Um, I got Momo, I think in my photo card. I don't know where it went, but, um, and also, um, the guy, the first, so I bought all, of, I bought three albums from the same place. We all bought around three albums on the first day and the guy liked us so much that he gave us like all of these, these nice photos. Um, so I got like Suyu and, um, or Dewey and then, um, Blackpink and uh, Suga, who's my favorite um, BTS member. So that's one of the albums that I picked up. Um, I love this album, it's a good one. And then I also picked up the new Blackpink album. It's sideways, now it's upside down. There we go, that's correct. Um, I love Blackpink, and yeah, it's a great album. Everyone should listen to it, and they look great. And I got um, Rose on. A photo card which is she is my favorite yes queens i love them i also um i i also got crap where did it go i also got lisa but i don't know where it went <laughs> it's in here someplace but um they're all al their album like photo cards were a little bit difficult to take out so i'm not gonna do them but um yeah this is a beautiful album i love it very much and now i can't close it which is a little bit sad. You know, I didn't plan this, so we're just, and then of course, I gotta pick up another BTS album. Um, Love Yourself, which was a album in like four separate parts. I picked up her 
um, because um, the smallest bird told me it was the one with my aesthetic. See, the problem with me and BTS is that I know a lot of their songs and I love them, but I don't know which songs are on which albums. So I was like, please help me, tell me which album to buy and I will buy it. And so he told me that I should buy um, Love Yourself, Her, and also Wings if I could find it. So I bought them both. Um, but yeah, this is a beautiful album and um, comes with a nice book of all them, all of the photos. Look at these beautiful boys. And I also, um, so one of the cool things about K-pop albums too is that there's different editions of them. So like I could have bought white or black of um, her and it would have been different. Like the black pink one, I could have bought this black version or there was a pink one with like a black um, cube. And then Summer Nights had a couple of different designs. Um, and the, so they have different versions of the photo sets. I actually got the one that I wanted um, because I wanted the one of them in the arcade. And I got it. Um, so, but it's, it's random, which is why people buy multiple copies of the same album, because you don't know which photo set you're gonna get. Um, yeah, I love them. So, those were all the albums that I bought. I'm surprised I limited myself to four, because they are so cheap in Korea. Like, why would you not buy all the things? Okay, now we have, like, empty bags and stuff, so I really need to, like, sort this out. All right, what's in here? Wow, it's like Christmas. Um, I, I remember buying things, but I don't remember what's in what bags. Um, oh my gosh. Um, so I did, I did a uh, Kuriko no Basque Gacha because I thought the Kuriko one was really cute and I really hoped that I would get him. Um, I got Takao, which is okay. I like Takao. I didn't have much luck on the Gacha front, so basically it's like a lottery. You, put, you pay and then you get a little toy of one of the characters or, um, there were a lot of different kinds. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and so I didn't have much luck with mine. Also, I did a Splatoon one and I got Lil Judd, which was great. Um, he turns out super cute. Um, I think I broke his little ball though, so that's a little bit sad. Um, and then what is this? Oh, this is my, this was like actually one of my first purchases in Japan. Um, I bought a little Kuriko holder because he's so cute. It was one of the first Kuriko things I saw. I have no self-control. We all know this. So I bought a little Kuriko folder and then we were just looking around, you know, like this was in Akihabara and like you never know really what you're going to find in Akihabara. Like they had so much and we found this corner that had like a bunch of Capcom stuff. Like there was a bunch of Monster Hunter stuff. We were like, wow, this is such a cool corner. We were just like looking through all of the Capcom stuff. Um, Noelle actually found a Morrigan like you use it to like make ramen like when you, you know when you make ramen you like pour the water in the instant noodle cup and then you like let it sit the, the morgan like sits on top of your cup and like keeps it down so it can steam it's kind of hilarious um but i found look at him he's so cute it's baby edgeworth like we were just looking through like all the like the first one on the front was like baby phoenix and i was like oh that's so cute like i i would buy that like because you never see baby phoenix anywhere and then there was like you know maya and pearl and i was just like looking through like oh these are so cute and then this one showed up and i was like yep we gotta pick this up so i bought it <laughs> Look at him. Oh, he's so cute. I love him a lot. Um, so that was that. Oh, I also brought my- Oh, I hope they didn't break. I brought my ears in case we went to Disney. We didn't end up going, but I wanted to make sure that I was prepared. Um, but I actually bought this ear, so it doesn't count. Um, and then... Oh, J-World. Where I probably could have died happy. Um, J-World is, um... It had all the Kuriko stuff. Be still my heart. Like, there was so much- there was a lot of Naruto. So if you are a Naruto fan, first of all, a, either a Naruto or a One Piece fan, go to J-World. It's in Sunshine City in Ikebukuro. Go there. Like, it's crazy how much they had. And they, apparently they also have like theme park style attractions. We didn't do any of them, but um, well I- I did like a 3D Kuroko no Basuke one, but it was just me. Um, so I did a gacha type thing for Kuriko. I got Midorima, 
which is okay. He's like my second favorite, so I accepted it. But then I found more of these later and I was like, oh, we could do it again. But no, we're not gonna, this is why I don't do gotcha because I never get who I want. Um, like who's my favorite? Oh, that's a receipt, let's not look at that shit. Um, and then I also bought some more stuff for me. I bought my, my boy, look at him. God, he's so cute. Um, they have a new event coming up where it's like them with like desserts and it doesn't start until like a couple days after like It was really like two days after we went and I was like you've got to be kidding me Um, I also bought this little handkerchief with his name on it because I figured I could tie it on my backpack and it would be super cute I love him a lot <laughs> He's possibly one of the husbandos I'm the most attract- like most attracted to That is- First of all, I'm attracted to all of my husbandos. I was trying to say most attached to, um, so twice for him to fight me. Um, and then I also bought uh, this for, um, so this is actually one of the first shows that me and Smallest Bird bonded over. We both watched Kuroko at the same, not at the same time even, I don't think I watched it after him. But that was, it was kind of how we met, um, was through the Kuroko no Basuke fandom. So I bought him a little matching one of his favorites so that we can both have little matching standees of our faves because um you know it's important so i'm gonna put that in his pile um so that's a thing let me get these bags out of the way i'm gonna need to throw all this away um wow this is so much fun <laughs> i am so terrible i hate myself um oh and then after j world i of course went shop oh well the husbandos. This was when we, I, I think I put this corner in the vlog. I, we were walking around in the store and I suddenly just hear Fire Emblem music. And I'm like, I, well, first of all, I immediately had a visceral reaction because I am very in tune to like audio cues. So I heard the music and I was like, where is it coming from? I must find it. So I tracked it down to this one corner where they're playing like the Fire Emblem main theme there's like all of this Fire Emblem stuff and I'm like so of course I had to buy the Hathbonos. Um, I found them and they are super cute and I love them. Um, then we went up a floor and this was after we went to J World might I add so I'd already bought all of this cargo stuff today. I bought more. Um, so they had these um, these little keychains which is it's basically like them being hoisted by the back of their jerseys. They had all of them at J World except for Kuroko. And I was like, oh no, I like these, they're super cute, but I couldn't find Kuroko, and then I found him at the store. So I was super happy about that. And then um, I also liked this design a lot of him with the little flower. Um, I couldn't decide whether I wanted it in a keychain or on this little mirror thing, and then eventually I decided that I had bought enough keychains, and so I bought the little mirror thing, and he's super cute. Look at him, God, marry me. I mean, what? Nothing. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to save the Pokemon stuff for last, but it's getting hard. It's one of the bigger bags in here. Sorry that the bag noises are so loud. Um, oh, I got a bonus, like a frequent card for the Taiyaki place, but we're never going back there, so. That was really good Taiyaki, too, so I don't know. Um, what is this? Oh, this is from the Studio Ghibli Museum. Um, when you go, everyone gets, like, a little, um, film cell. So that's cool. I don't think you're going to be able to see it too well, but mine is from Hell's Moving Castle, which is awesome because I love Hell's Moving Castle, um, <laughs> which is also something that Small Spirit and I were talking about. Um, I also bought, they had a lot of really cute pins there. Um, everything at the Studio Ghibli Museum was very expensive, of course, but they had some really, really cute pins, so I bought some pins. Um, I bought this key as a livery service. Um, because I thought it was adorable, and I think Noelle bought the same one, so we match now. And I also bought this Totoro pin, because I thought it was the cutest. Um, that, is that everything I bought from Studio Ghibli? Yeah. But then I, I kept, like, the map and stuff, too, so... Just because. But that their store was so cute. Like, I loved it. Wait, is this my ticket? Oh, I should keep this, too. <laughs> okay, so that was that. And then I think I have something else in here. What is this? Oh, these might be some things for my sisters, actually. Um, I'll bag down. Um, so when we went to Nada, they had these, this cute little gift shop inside the shrine that had like all of this 
all of stuff with like deer, the deer on it, and then all of stuff with the Buddha on it. So I saw these little keychains that were shaped like Magatamas. And first of all, I was like, oh my god, these are adorable. And then I realized that there's like five of them. So I'm gonna share them with my sisters. Um, I haven't decided which ones I'm gonna give them yet, but they all have the little deer on them. And they're super cute. I love them a lot. So I bought those for them. So I'm gonna put that in their pile. And then also, I think these are the other, this is the other thing I bought for them. And I actually do need to open this, so that's okay. I hope this made it back. This, this is wrapped really well, I'm confident. Um, so when we were in one of the neighborhoods, they were selling, this is original, this is meant to be like holders for chopsticks. Like when you're, you, while you're eating, you set your chopsticks on it so you don't just set it on the table. But I just thought they were really cute. So I picked up these little cat things for my sisters. Um, so let me, this one is for Caroline, this one is for Rachel. Um, no wait, I got that backwards. There we go. Yes, there we go. That's right. Um, I thought those were super cute, so I picked those up. Wow, this is getting really long. Hi, how's it going? They, everything is hard right now. Um, that's for my, that's luggage, that's for trash. Um, and then I think, well, nope, that's not all I have left, but of course, I spent lots of money at the Pokemon Center. First and foremost, look at this Eevee. Holy crap, it is cute. Um, they had pretty much all of the evolutions like this. And I picked, um, I picked Espeon because I thought it was the cutest. Um, so I had, I had this and I was carrying it around. Um, and then, you know, I was just walking around. I was trying to help Noelle pick out something uh, for herself and I saw, you probably wonder why this bag is so big, right? Did I buy myself a Kigu? Yes, I did buy myself a Kigu. Did I just get a Kigu like this year free from a video game competition at my university? I did. Did I want another one? Yes, I did. So now I have both a Pikachu and a Vaporeon Kigu because I have no self control. I haven't tried it on yet. I'm very excited to do so, but I will do that later to spare you guys like five hours of me trying to put on a Kigu. Um, so that was the thing that I did. Questionable decisions, of course. Um, oh, this one from the Edo Museum. That's kind of cool. Um, and then the next day we went back because um, Noelle decided she wanted to buy more stuff. Oh, this is there's actually some J World stuff in here too. Um, so we all agreed to buy these little, I still have to put it together actually, but they're little Pokeballs and they have like environments inside. They're the Alolan ones. So I actually got a Mimikyu. So you can, I, you can't really see the Mimikyu, but I haven't put it together. Oh, there he is. I haven't put it together yet, but actually I'm going to do that later. So I will leave that out. Um, so we all agreed to buy one, um, together to see what we would get. Um, I don't know what the heck this is, but that's weird. I'm not, I don't trust that. <laughs> it kind of looks like candy, but I'm, I don't know where it came from. So, um, then I have some J World stuff. I'm going to keep this. No, he broke! Oh man. Of course it broke on the Kuriko side. Um, so I ordered the Kuriko and Kisei drink. Um, and so they it came with this little styrofoam thing of Kuriko and Kisei, so I kept it because I'm trash. Oh man, I can't believe it broke. He doesn't look that cute in this anyway though. So whatever. Um, and then because we ordered um, the Kuriko, I, Maddie and Noelle ordered Haikyuu drinks and I ordered the Kuriko Nabaske ones so they were like, you get a free postcard. So of course, I picked my husband. God, look at him. He's so attractive. He got a little bit bent, but that's okay. It's fixable. Um, and then I have some like maps and stuff. Oh God, everything just fell apart here. I don't need that. I don't need this. I don't need this. Okay, so far so good. We're almost done. How did my chain smoker shirt get in here? Hmm. Okay. I was wondering where that went. Um. Oh, the little the lady at the shrine, um, the mother and child shrine gave us these little candies that are super cute. So um, I'm, I'm, you'll eat that later. Um. Oh, here's my um Pokemon masking tape that I bought when my 3ds decided to just 
like completely flake off the front cover, so I fixed it with Pokemon mask, like Pokemon washi tape. Um, they're super cute. That was one of the reasons that we went to the Pokemon Center again, because I was like, guys, I need to fix my 3DS. Um, so now it's completely covered with this red Pikachu washi tape, which is great and all, but it's kind of coming off, so I think I need to put some masking tape on top of it. Um, but, so yeah, that was fun. Um, oh, this is, these were our fortunes that we got from the, um, the shrine, the night, um, of the festival. Um, I can't read it, but that's okay. Maybe I'll be able to read it someday. I'm not even sure if it's good or not. The problem is if it's bad, you're supposed to, like, tie it onto the shrine. Like, so the bad luck doesn't come with you. So that, you know, could potentially be a problem if this was bad, but uh, it's probably fine, right? Um, oh, uh, um, Noelle and I bought shirts in Korea. They had a deal where if you buy three shirts, I mean, not in Korea, um, this was in Japan, this was in Harajuku. Um, they had a deal going on, so we went in on the deal together, and so I bought this, um, no, get out of the way tag, this little Wi-Fi design shirt, because I thought it was super cute. Um, so I bought that, let's put that with my chain smoker shirt, because those need to be washed. And then I also bought an outfit, um, in Harajuku, because that's like the fashion district, so I bought a cute little sweater. I actually, I'm not gonna lie to you, I bought it so that I could revamp my Hatful Boyfriend cosplay, <laughs> but I bought this cute little sweater, and, um, a little skirt. Like, isn't this cute? Oh, it's a little bit wrinkled, but it's super cute. I was super happy with it, so I'm gonna wash that later. Also, I was like, I'm gonna try and be fashionable in law school. I don't know if I'm actually gonna try and be fashionable in law school. Um, oh, I got this little, we got these little bird, um, um, little, little bird charms at the, um, the festival as well. Um, they came with the fortunes, so... A little bird. Um, I think we're almost done here. Thank God. Um, this looks like it's the last bag. What is in here? Oh, it's my snacks. I bought snacks, like, so the thing that I promised that I would buy my sisters was candy uh, from Japan. So the night before we left, I went to 7-Eleven and I bought them a crap ton of candy. So chocolate, crunky. I know. Um, these little peach candy, like, that I thought were cute. Um, I didn't actually try these, so I'm gonna make them give me some, but I thought they looked super cute. So I bought those, and then I bought, um, some, like, hard soda flavor candies for them to share. So, I bought those, and then I also, I bought some other stuff in Korea, like, some other candy in Korea as well. I should probably Ignore me. I also bought honey butter chips, but they're tied up right now, so I'm not gonna get them out. Um, but I also bought, I, I found some blueberry pocky at, in Korea, so I bought that. Um, I got, apparently these are really good, says our Korean contact, so I bought both of these. And, um, bought some matcha Kit Kats, which I have not yet opened. So, yeah, that's everything, I think. And now I'm sitting on this bed surrounded by all of my trash that I bought for myself. God, I hate myself, but I'm so happy. <laughs> so yeah, that I think is everything um, for my Japan and Korea vlogs. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, things I didn't cover that you want me to talk about, you know what to do, put them down below. Um, let me think, any business that we need to take care of. Um, the schedule might be changing soon but um it'll stay the same through summer but um i start law school in less than a month ah first of all i'm terrified um i'm also gonna be moving into my new apartment soon so everything might get a little bit janky um around mid-august like just bear with me for a bit while i'm getting everything set up uh in my new apartment 
Um, video should hopefully continue because I'll be able to upload at school if it comes to that. I am getting internet at my apartment, but I don't know what's happening with that yet. I haven't even thought that far ahead. It's time to actually start thinking about this stuff now that I'm back from Japan and Korea and I'm a little bit terrified. Um, but since school is going to start again soon, I may need to shift my stream schedule again once school starts. But since I, I'm supposed to be getting my schedule this week, so I will let you know, I will revamp my schedule and let you know as soon as possible, but I don't know when that's going to be yet. So maybe it'll be by the time this video goes up. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I've been going on for like an hour now. I'm ready to stop. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and yeah, I'm going to clean this up now. <laughs> All right. It's. So good to be back. Thank you for bringing with me through this um, absence and yeah, I hope you're having a good day. All right, I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys in whatever you happen to watch next. I'll see you then. Bye!